Good morning. Dwayne here, Dry Creek Wrangler School. Um, you ever watch much rodeo? You ever go to a rodeo? Or maybe watch it on TV? Maybe you're back east somewhere in the city, but you get RFD TV on, uh, on your cable, and, and so you watch some rodeos. And it's fun to watch. You don't, uh, maybe you don't understand how they score everything and how everything goes, but it's an interesting spectacle. Especially the rough stock, uh, whether riding bareback bronx or saddle bronx or, or bull riding. Partigas 1845 this morning. Uh, got a couple of things to uh, celebrate. Uh, so those that know we were expecting the fourth grandchild, uh, Esther Michelle was has been born, and her and Mama are both doing good. And... As of this morning, as a recording of this, the channel hit 10,000 subs. I have no idea how that happened, but I thank you for it. Um, and uh, when I started this channel, I thought, well, if I get 100 or 200 subs, or maybe somebody out there get help. I never expected this. So this is all kudos to you, uh, and I appreciate it. Humbly, gratefully, appreciate it. So you're sitting there watching a rodeo, watching rough stock. Let's say bareback bronc riding. All right. The announcer says, shoot number one. And so all eyes go to shoot number one. And uh, you can just see across the arena. You can just see the shoot. You see the cowboy. You see him nod his head. The gate swings open. The horse comes out. Uh, you don't know everything about how it's supposed to be done, but it sure looks good. Um, and so the horse jumps out of the chute. And he starts bucking across the arena. And to you, it looks pretty. The cowboy's in perfect time. He's in perfect balance. Um, he's got his hand up in the air. He's got his hand in his rigging. He's spurring with every jump. And he's sitting in the middle, and it just looks perfect. Then the buzzer sounds at eight seconds. He doesn't wait for the pickup man. He lets loose the rigging. He rolls off, lands on his feet tips his hat to the crowd and walks away and you're like man that's beautiful i mean that's just pretty and that's got to be a high score and that looks like a master class in bronc riding right there and so you wait for the announcer to announce the score and the score comes up and the judges gives him a 70. now you don't know a whole lot but you know a perfect score is 100 and to you that looks so smooth and so pretty i mean he even landed on his feet he should have got more than a 70 but oh well we go to shoot number two, horse comes out of the chute, the guy makes two jumps and he's off. Shoot number three, bronc comes out of the chute, the guy makes it to about six seconds, does the best he can, he's off, he hits the dirt. Shoot number four, you can see top of the cowboy hat, you can see the cowboy nod at the, at the guys at the gate, the gate swings open, the horse comes out and the horse starts bucking. Now, you can see this guy's riding, but you compare it to the first guy, and it's not as smooth. It's not as pretty. Yeah, he marked him out. Yeah, he's spurring. Yeah, he's got his hand up in the air. But he's not as showy. And there's a couple times it looks like he's in trouble. It looks like he's coming off a little bit to one side. It looks like he's going he's gonna to come off. But he makes it to the buzzer. And he has spurred every jump. He's done what he's supposed to. He makes it to the buzzer. Pickup man rolls up on his horse. He reaches out, grabs pickup man, get, comes off the horse, hits the ground, trips and falls in the dirt flat on his face. But he gets up, brushes himself off, and limps out of the arena. You say, well, he made the eight seconds. That's more than the other two did. But he wasn't near as smooth and pretty as the first guy, so he's not going to get the score. First guy got a 70. You wait for the announcer, the judges give this guy an 81. And you are like, 81? What in the world? It didn't look near as pretty, didn't look near as smooth, didn't look near as successful as the first guy. Well, there's some things you might want to learn and understand about riding rough stock in the rodeo. A perfect score is 100. Okay, that's the best they're going to get. But the best cowboy on his best day, making his best ride, 
only gets 50 points. That's the best he can do, 50 points. The other 50 points goes to the horse or the bull in bull riding. So here's the deal. The judges realized that the second horse bucked harder than the first horse. The first cowboy looked good. He looked smooth. He looked pretty. But his horse wasn't bucking as hard. Wasn't kicking as high. Wasn't sun fishing. Wasn't twisting. Didn't have a stutter step. He came out in perfect time and went straight across the arena. The the other cowboy, his horse came out, he bucked harder, he twisted more, he, his timing was off. He was a harder horse to ride. In rodeo, like in life, there ain't no money in easy riding. There's no money in easy riding. A couple more things about riding in, in rodeo, riding rough stock. Cowboy doesn't get to choose his mount. You don't get to pick your bronc. When you show up, and uh, you pay your entry fees, they assign you They assign you who you're going to ride. And that's who you get. You ride whoever they, that they assign to you. And I've got a son who rode rodeo some. And uh, I've been back behind the chutes with him. And I guarantee the cowboys are not behind the chutes saying, oh, I hope I get that little paint over there. He's kind of a powder puff. He don't buck very hard. I, I know I can ride that one. I rode that one uh, in another city last week. Don't work that way. They want the tough ones. They want the hard bucking ones. They want the, the big ones and the stout ones because that's where the money is. That's where the glory is. There's no money in easy riding and they don't get to pick their mounds. That's life. Son, that's life. We don't get to pick our bronc. Our bronc is our life and we don't get to pick it. You don't get to pick. I didn't get to pick my physical attributes when I was born. We don't get to pick our family. We don't get to pick where we're born. We don't get to pick our circumstances. Uh, that's the bronc that is assigned to us. And we're expected to ride it. And you say, well, I, I came from a poor family and I have an alcoholic, I had an alcoholic abusive father and I wasn't raised uh, with with this kind of teaching and this kind of training and this kind of understanding. And I was beaten, abused when I was a kid. Yeah, you were assigned a bad bronc. So the glory is if you ride it. Listen, people who are born, this is, stay with me here, all right? People who are born in a really good family, who are born with really good genetics uh who were born financially secure who are put automatically in a good school uh whose parents pay for them to go to college and they want a, a doctor or a lawyer or a politician there's nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with any of that okay that's not what i'm saying all right but we look at those folks and then we look at our life you're born to poor parents who couldn't, went to public school. Uh, parents couldn't pay for you to go to college. Uh, you were born uh, physically weak or, or, or you had a handicap or, or whatever. Um, there's more glory in riding a bad bronc than there is a good bronc. And so what we have to do in life is, is we have to stop saying, I've got a bad bronc. Life ain't fair. I didn't get any of the good breaks. Life ain't fair. No, what we need to do is embrace the difficult ride that we've been given and know that's where the glory is. And it's also, you can look at it and you can take this metaphor, uh, not just one bronc for life. But life is made up of a lot of broncs. A rodeo rider on a circuit, he rides broncs all the time. He'll ride, and maybe he'll ride more than one at one rodeo, and then he'll jump in his car, and, and he'll tear off through the night, and he'll, he'll do another one. Well, we all have our daily broncs to ride, and we don't get to pick them. They just, they come to us, and some of them are hard. 
and they buck us off. And what do you do? Listen, when Cowboy gets bucked off in the arena, there's some things he cannot do. He can't lay there in the dirt and cry. He can't sit there and kick and pound his fist in the sand like a little child throwing a tantrum in the middle of mama's floor um, because he got bucked off because he didn't get the horse that he wanted to ride. He can't, of course he can't do that. He can't get up, fake a limp off like he's some kind of soccer player or, or these modern NBA players flopping all over the court pretending to be hurt. Now, he can't limp off and, and say, I'm not riding anymore, I quit. It ain't never going to be nothing if he does that. He gets up and he goes to the next bronc. i tell you what else he does. He studies and figures out what is it in his technique, what is it in his way that got him bucked off. The way he does things, his technique, there's a weakness somewhere. What is it with his riding that he keeps getting bucked off? And he goes and learns and studies it, and he improves it, and he gets better. And the next bronc comes, and he rides it to the buzzer. Look, we all get bucked off. They ain't none of us walk on water. None of us walk on water. None of us get through this life successful at everything we do. <coughs> none of us get through without failing. You know, sometimes, sometimes we can say, you know, that horse was just, that horse was just too much. I couldn't ride him. But sometimes we got to say, you know, I wasn't a very good rider. I got myself bucked off. And you can't just lay there in the dirt. You get up and you brush yourself off and you figure out what you failed, what caused you to fail, and you get on the next bronc and you go. That's life. That's life. Now, I want to close with this. If you're constantly getting bucked off in life, if you're constantly getting bucked off in life, seems like everything you do, your relationships, your jobs, your everything you do, you're just constantly making a mess of things. Then what you might want to do is study the life of the only man in history that made it from start to finish and never got bucked off. You might need to take riding lessons from the master. Okay, if that metaphor is a little bit deep, you might want to start looking at the Bible and look at the life of Christ. He never got bucked off, and maybe we can take riding lessons from him. Uh, but, but you're going to hit the dirt. You're going to hit the dirt. There's no money in easy riding. Life is not about easy riding. And if you sit in the safe place, in the easy place, um, in the secure place, and you watch the world go by, yeah, yeah, you won't get bucked off as much, but you won't have near the glory. We know who Abraham Lincoln is. We know who James Garfield is. We know who William Taft is. William Taft and Garfield are, are two of our presidents. Abraham Lincoln was a president. Abraham Lincoln is a legend. Taft is not. Garfield is not. All three were presidents. What's the difference? Abraham Lincoln grew up dirt poor, taught himself to read. You should read his life on how many times in life he failed at business, how many times he failed in his election biz into the Senate, how many times he failed as a lawyer. He finally gets into the presidency, leads his country through the American Civil War, and dies with a bullet in the back of the head. You think you got a tough bronc to ride? But how many cities, how many towns, how many counties, how many courthouses, how many streets, how many lakes are named Lincoln? How many statues? How many memorials? How many books? How many movies? The man had a tough bronc to ride, and he rode it. And he rode it, and he got the glory. There's no money in easy riding.